Hey everybody, it's Eugene Lee Show, and today I'd like to show you a little bit more on Cloud Compare and how you can use um, fitting, so primitive fitting, to a point cloud. So um, what I have here in front of me is just a meshed object. A, it's a cylinder that I created in uh, 3ds Max, and what I have done is added some noise, uh, a noise modifier to it, so it's not a perfect cylinder. Uh, but what I want to be able to do is estimate um, the uh, best fit cylinder from this and then get some kind of a diameter or radius from it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I, I want to work with a point cloud. So I'm going to select the cylinder and I'm going to sample points on the mesh. So I'm going to click this here. Uh, I've got 100,000 points. So I'll just say, yeah, that's what I want. And you can probably see if I shut, up, shut this off, I've now got, uh, I'll increase the point size. I've got a point cloud. Okay, about 100,000 points, or it should be. So if I click on this and go down, I've got, well, it's got about 80,000 points, 79,990. So I guess it does its best to get close to what you've put in there. So now that I've got this uh, particular point cloud, I want to be able to create a primitive based on the diameter. So uh, a best fit uh, cylinder. So I'm going to have the uh, cylinder sampled selected. It's important you always have the uh, object that you want to work on selected first. And um, now obviously I've minimized my screen here, so normally you would see all the uh, icons up top, but it's this one here. It's the one that says R&D. So I'm going to click on that. And when this comes up, you'll normally have sphere and plane, uh, all three of these selected. But I'm just going to make sure that I just have cylinder selected. And I'm going to put in about, oh, here I've already got about 10,000 points, which is good. Um, so you can specify the minimum. Here it says the minimum points per primitive. So 10,000 is a good number. And I'm going to hit OK. And so it's going to go through and it's going to create a cylinder. Um, so it has it deselected. I'm going to select it. And you'll see that uh, it fits right in there. And when you read right off of here where it says cylinder, it says radius is 1.00275. Now, um, because it's the best fit cylinder, it's not going to be exactly one, but when I created my original uh, meshed cylinder, it was in fact one uh, meter radius, and then I added noise and stuff. So it's going to throw it off. It's not completely symmetrical. Uh, but that's basically how we, one way that you can get a measurement from this. Um, another thing that you could do uh, is, let's see here, I'm going to shut off the uh, the uh, best fit cylinder and I'm just going to go back to the point cloud here. So if I wanted to, um, with the, okay, again, with this uh, point cloud, uh, the cylinder dot sampled selected, I'm going to go, there's something like a limit box here that you can use. And let's say I just wanted to take a measurement at a certain uh, length along this uh, uh, point cloud, whatever it might be. Well, I can, I can isolate uh, part of the point cloud like this and there's an option here to export it as a new cloud So I'm going to do that. I'm going to export it as a new cloud and I'm just going to kill this and now I have uh, down here you see uh, Cylinder sampled segmented. So that's what I've got here. If I look at it at a top-down view I can now just use the uh, The measurement tools to take some measurements if I wanted to so I have, I have to make sure that it's selected and This button here uh, where it says point picking. I'm going to click on that there's an option here for distance, select two points, and then I can just kind of like click on one point and then click on another point across here. And it sees, you see here it says 2.02, which is, um, you know, uh, twice the radius, which would be 1.01, .01, so it's very close to what I had originally. Now, of course, depending on where you take these measurements, it's going to have an effect, but this is a way that you can um, isolate a section of a point cloud and then take measurements. Okay, uh, what else can I show you? Well, I guess very quickly... Uh, one thing that we could do is I'll turn the the sampled cylinder back on which is the point cloud and I will also do the cylinder here and of course cloud compare does comparisons very nicely between uh, point clouds and point clouds or point clouds and meshes well the cylinder is considered a mesh so I can use that if I select the cylinder uh, the point clouds of the cylinder and the uh, best fit cylinder. Uh, I now have uh, two objects that I can compare. So there's an option here for compute cloud to mesh distance. So I'll do that. I'm just going to use the defaults and hit compute and then hit OK. And now when I go back and shut these off, I've got my sampled. Uh, let me go back and increase that a little bit. And now you can go back and you can do some things with the. Uh, height ramps and such looking for deviation. Um, I can also bring up the height ramp here like like that. And let me adjust that just a little bit so we get a little bit less. Get blue on the bottom end. Get some red 
up on the end, spread that out a bit. And yeah, and that gives you a deviation of your pipe to your best fit cylinder. So now you can see, um, you know, where things have gone wrong uh, or where there might be an issue. So uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to show you. Um, very quick and dirty way to take some uh, measurements based on a point cloud, creating primitives, and also you can segment uh, or uh, take sections of a, point, of a point cloud and just take point-to-point -point measurements. All right, thank you very much.